G'day everyone, Matt Elder of MattElder.com here and today we're going to cover off how to create a Lego mosaic similar to this one. This is going to be the first video of a two or three part series covering how to make Lego mosaics. In this video we'll give an overview of the whole process and in later videos we'll go into a lot more depth on certain aspects. We'll start off by first talking about Mosaic Maker websites and downloads to create a mosaic from a photo. Please visit MattElder.com and subscribe so you can always be kept in the loop with new videos and exclusive content regardless of any YouTube algorithm changes. To find a list of links to Mosaic Makers, you can go to my website MattElder.com and then you can scroll down to the November 2019 archive. Give that a click. And then if you go down to the one on the 14th of November, Lego Mosaic Image Makers. There's the one which I've done. And then below here is a list of different mosaic makers out there. And as I find other ones which work, I add them into the list so I can always come back here and check it. So the one which I used to create this image was the pictobrick.de. So if we give a click on that picked a brick here, the Einstein one there. It's a download which you can download to your operating system which I quite like. So once you've downloaded it then you've got it forever whereas some of the other ones they're hosted online so if they ever go down then you won't have access to them again and in the tutorial there it just runs you through a few different options on how to use it. In the Mosaic Maker, once I'd uploaded my picture, adjusted the size, selected the colors, I was then able to output uh, these documents which tell you a whole bunch of information. So this is the actual image to work off in your image and then if you go under bill of material it will then tell me here all the different colors I selected one by one tiles and it'll tell me all the different colors and how many I need of each. Then under building instruction it will tell you row by row column by column what each piece should be. So you can either use the row by row and column or you can just go back to the image that was created. From this, we then ordered the pieces required from the secondary marketplace, Bricklink.com, and this is what came back. Okay, you can go to the package. It's got most of the bits which we need. When you open it, it's quite heavy for what it is. Two kilograms, there we go. And all the pieces. So looking at about almost 9,000. Normally both plates get the Lego ones. These are 32 by 32 studs, which is about 25 by 25 centimeters, or what's that, 10 inches by 10 inches. Usually get those, but what we want for this one is we want a red color, and they generally only come in the greens, the blues, or a larger one, the grays, which you need which. Reason for that is if you have any little gaps and things showing through, you'll see the greens or the blues or whatever it is. From art, whenever you do things underneath, you generally, for flesh and stuff like that, always start with something warm, which is like a red, because if you use a blue or a green, if that shows through, if somebody's got a slight blue or green tint to them, they look and feel sick. So I couldn't get them in the Lego ones, but managed to get one of these ones here, which we'll give a try. So a Fun Haven one could be interesting. Um, the other thing which you notice with these, compared to the normal Lego ones, they actually got a bit of thickness to them. Lego ones, what's that, maybe one or two mils? These are more like three or four. And where you can really see the difference is on the back. This is just a standard sort of one. Whereas this, it's got some regular Lego bits. Stick pieces into it. Normally with these, you can't build it up and put anything underneath it. So if we just take the normal base, put a couple of these, got two by ones by fives, one on each corner. And they can all go into the underside and that's pretty rigid. You can start stacking them. Usually stay away from anything which is non-Lego as 
and found the quality or the clutch power, which is how they stick, to be quite poor. So things come off. But these ones, just wanted to try, see what they're like. I'm gonna do the demo test on them. They seem to stick pretty well, actually. So we'll see how they go. I'm gonna do two of these at once. I'm actually gonna do it as a 64 by 64. So I have two there, two there. I'm probably going off camera. Anyhow, you get a square. And then for the second one, another four of these. Okay. Let's see how it goes. And now onto the time lapse. We'd actually taken that final image from the Mosaic Maker and printed quarters of the image on standard A4 8 by 11 -ish inch size paper. Thus each red base plate was a quarter and just made doing the whole mosaic easier and more manageable. Every couple of rows that we go along will mark off on the printout. Just makes it easier to keep track of where you're up to. The thing with LEGO is that not all pieces are available in all colours. Thus some of the programs that generate the mosaics aren't smart enough to work out if that color is available in that brick or tile or plate or whatever it is that you're using. Other times it might be available in that color but really expensive whereas if you just move to another similar color it is more readily available and far cheaper and cost effective. So it might be suggested to use a Maersk blue whereas a medium azure blue would be around an eighth the price but similar in tone and pigment color. Check out our other video where we've developed Lego brick and tile color wheels slash guides. These go into a lot more detail and really handy for anyone doing my own creations or mocks. We've used flat 1x1 one one tiles here but you could have just as easily used 1x1 one one plates, 1x1 one one bricks or whatever sizes will fit the color lengths. Around this video we'll also provide affiliate link to those Funhaven base plates as they seemed really reasonable. Having the ability to stick bricks on the back of them makes it easier to join them together with other plates and mount them. We've also discovered that 64 by 64 studs is slightly larger than 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters, which seems to be the last standard frame and memory box sizes. So once you go beyond a standard 48 by 48 stud base plate, mounting and framing becomes more challenging considerations. For the actual portrait, for best results, you want something that has good contrast. Basically this means a photo taken in daylight where there is some shadow on the face. Using a flash will be the worst kind of photo as it flattens the face. Once you've taken a photo, which you've probably done on a phone, most have got a way to increase the contrast or play with a few filters to make the photo better. It is definitely worth doing this as you will be spending some time on the mosaic part. Thus you want to get the best possible photo you can. Try to make the head as big as possible in the mosaic. This just gives the best chance for the eyes, nose and mouth shapes to be distinguishable and characteristic of the person in the portrait. Even at the large size of 64 by 64 studs that we've got here, it still isn't a lot of detail you're playing around with, even though it is still 4096 one by one times. Miles. We did spend a bit of time up front selecting the best image and tweaking the brightness and contrast. If we couldn't get something that would work, we'd try another photo. For this one, by the time you select a photo, make adjustments, source pieces and sit down and apply 4096 one by one tiles, you don't have much change out of 15 to 20 hours. I might be biased but think the result came out pretty well. The bulk of it is grey tones with pops of colour just to break up the monochrome look and give a little bit of bounce to the image. The approach to applying tiles would vary but generally start with a row and a column and work out the whole length. It just became easier to judge tiles relative to one another and prevent too many mistakes. Then might try to block out large patterns of single colours which then became easier to place other colours. As going along, found you could use the edge of a brick separator or the edge of a plate to align the square tiles. When they don't sit in straight lines, a slight zigzag pattern can develop which might drive anyone with OCD crazy. This was one of a pair of mosaics we did at the same time, so in the end dealing with over 8,000 one by one tiles. They were done as gifts and well received. They can be impressionistic like in that when you stand from afar they appear as a photo. When you get up close however, they dissolve into square geometric pattern something very satisfying about applying those last few tiles and finishing an image. And here is how the four quarters come together. 
and here is how they come apart. If you'd like to get your own custom portrait or pet mosaic for yourself or as a gift, drop me a line at matt at mattelder.com. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments and may try to answer in subsequent follow-up part videos. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button or be awesome and subscribe. Here are some other videos you might like. Until next time when we talk about all things LEGO.